I'd like to thank Christopher Evans, the British Youth of Masters, and our compassion and mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessors, <coughs> senior transmitters, transmitters, um, lecturers, temple masters, and everyone for giving me this opportunity to uh, learn to talk about today's topic, which is chapter 69 of the Tao Te Ching. Um, its title is Using the Military, okay, <laughs> or Applying the Military, okay, or Utilizing the Military. Um, it's, um, as I said earlier, it's about, about average, a little bit below average, but length. It's divided into three sections. It only has um, 11 uh, phrases, if you will. Um, so the first section is talking about a military strategy. Yeah, military strategy. <laughs> And second section is talking about how to apply it. Hmm, okay, how to apply it, uh, analysis of that strategy. And then the conclusion of that, okay? The conclusion uh, of how to use, of uh, applying the military strategy. All right, okay. So let's go to um, the outline. All right, here's the outline. All right, so the first section that's follow as follows. In using the military, there is a saying, I dare not be the host, but prefer to be the guest. I dare not advance an inch, but prefer to retreat or withdraw a foot. Hmm, okay, so yeah, okay, well. So this, yeah, this is a military saying, okay? It's a dictum saying, strat okay, it's part of uh, let's see, let's go to what the basic meaning is, okay, on the external level, okay, so when employing military strategies, there is a saying, the host is the aggressor, while the guest is the defender, that's what, that, that's what the host and guest up implies, okay, so this military saying was, was found, by the way, or similar, it, uh, it found in uh, the, it's called the art of war, by Sun Tzu or Sun Tzu Bing Fa. Actually, that's a it's not an accurate translation because there's no word for no no word for art in here. It's actually Sun Tzu's military methods or tactics or you know strategies or you know fa fa is like method. Okay, method. Okay, technique. You can say technique. Yeah, you know methods. Okay, methodologies. Okay, so actually, so the art of war is a it's a more a poetic translation. Okay, now Sun Tzu lived uh, was around in the late spring and autumn period. You know that roughly 600, 500 BCE. Okay, r r r roughly that time. Okay, roughly roughly contemporary with Lao Tzu. Okay, that's just uh, you know just a historical. Okay, historical perspective okay all right so that's that's what the, as i say so so lao tzu is you know taking a line you know uh, one of the teachings or whatever uh, from the military strategy from Sun Tzu. okay now uh as opposed to wh who's the host and who's the guest uh, and or, or or not not who's the host who's the guest but 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 what roles do the host and guest play it's different in the West, okay, in the Western concept. Now, this is opposite to the Western concept of the visitor, that's the guest, being the attacker and the host being the defender, all right? All right. This military concept came from the siege war warfare of med medieval year. It's just like in, in, well, I just want to give you a size, not, like today in sports, you know, you have the home team and the away team, right? You know, in sports, right? You know, when you have, you know, well, let's say football is over, but baseball, baseball, let's say baseball, you have the, the Yankees playing at Yankee Stadium. So they're the host. Get it? They're the host. And then, you know, let's say the Mets, I don't know, the Mets you know, are visiting Yankee Stadium. So they are the guest. Now, in modern day sports, okay, the host is usually the, the, the passive guy, the, the passive, because you're waiting for the guest to arrive and, 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 and do their thing or whatever. Okay. So, 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 so that's, that's similar to what, the European concept or the Western concept, basically. Okay, now, now, how, how did that come about? It's because, okay, it's because the reasoning is that the visitor, the guest, attack is is the active party because he's coming to your 
home or coming to your home, right? Coming to your home. Okay, it's active party. It's the, the guest or the visitor is maneuvering around, looking for an opening or weakness, and initiates. You know, it's the active party initiates probes and attacks. Whereas the host, you know, the defender is the defender because the host is reacting to what the guest is doing. Okay, so for example, the host, the defender, stays is staying behind a castle, within a castle, waiting for the attackers, the guests. To do something and then fight back to repel the attack. So that's the Western concept, just like in modern day sports. Okay, it's just similar to modern day sports. Okay. However, the difference is here. The difference is that in the Eastern concept, the dynamic is reversed, and the idea comes from social visits. So as opposed to you know warfare, <laughs> so the host is the active. Role player plays the active role while the guest plays the passive role. Yeah, it's very interesting. And, and how's that? How, how, what's the reasoning, rationale behind it? Well, okay, the host, the act, act is the active player, initiates the conversation, making guests comfortable and offering hospitality, etc. Or the host initiates the invitation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Okay, and then the guest is the passive, plays the passive role. They respond, RSVP, right? Responds to the invitation, et cetera, okay? Or awaits for the host initiative of conversation, hospitality, et cetera. So that's, that's, that's the Eastern concept, okay? So that's where that, uh, that Sun Tzu is being, oh, well, 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 anyway, that, that Sun Tzu comes, okay, the, the, uh, the idea comes from about, not being the uh, being the host and prefer to the guest. Okay, so 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 externally, um, uh, the real meaning of being the guest is not to attack first, right? It's, it's because the guest is the playing the passive role, reactive role, right? While the host is the pro proactive, plays the proactive role, is the attacker. Okay, so that's what the the the, the the first line says, you know, the military strategy, okay, saying that you want, you do not want to be the attacker, you rather be the reactor or the defender, okay. So what Lao Tzu, so I, that's what Lao Tzu is saying, there's not initiate an action and prefers to react than to initiate action. So, so that's what, okay, so Lao Tzu is using this military strategy to, 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 to generalize, you know, to, to say, oh, you know, this is how you know, he would behave in life, okay? Now, why, why, why is that case? Why is that the case? Why, why, why do, why, you know, does La, the Lao Tzu borrow this, this idea from the art of war to say, hey, you know, you know, one shouldn't be the attacker. It's better to be the defender, okay? So, so, if, so, so let's, so in martial arts, this means, oops, okay, Okay, this means being ready for an attack and then blocking the attack or blunting the attack and then dealing a devastating counterattack. Now, how do we know this Eastern concept is the correct one? Now, this interpretation of lines are firm and further explained in the next phrase, okay, about uh, advancing an inch and retreating a foot, okay? So, so that's, that's the idea. You respond to a initial, you know, uh, a uh, 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 strike or, or attack, right? And you respond to it, okay? Uh, you counterattack, you know, that, and then you block it and counterattack it. That's that's the strategy, okay? That's that's the idea, all right? Okay, so it's like saying, well, well, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it a little bit later. But anyway, so the basic meaning of um, uh, I dare not advance an inch, but prefer to retreat or withdraw a foot is on the military or social sphere uh, it means he dares not uh, to advance by attacking rather it is better to retreat let the opposing side overextend and overexpand okay so that's the military you know uh, uh rationale behind the you know the the, the 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 art of war in the art of war saying that you know rather than attacking you retreat and let the attacker draw him in draw him into a trap you know, overextend and overexpend them. Then you you counterattack. Okay, so so that's that's the idea. Okay, so that's the military side, or 
we can say social, you know, when we do this, okay? So, so um, advance forward to engage the opponent. So on a social level, we say advance for, forward to engage an opponent, and then retreat to draw in the opponent to have them expose their weakness and then counterattack. So that's, you know, so, you know, so we could do this um, in, um, you know, in courts, legal courts, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So, so, you know, besides the battlefield, okay. And, you know, it's so social. And, and, and here's, here's what, what, what the, some possibilities of what withdrawing from the attacker means. Okay. To, you know, we have to withdraw. Okay. That is the attacker overextends and becomes momentarily unable to defend itself because the attacker is just focused on going forward, right? Advancing, right? You know, taking territory or, or stuff like that. Okay. So, okay. So then they become extended, right? That's the logistics, right? The logistics aspect, right? You know, you have a long logistics tail, you know, to try to support. And, you know, so in history, you see that in many times in, uh, in military battles, like Napoleon advancing into Moscow. Okay. And then, you know, he got overextended. And then became trapped. Okay, uh, same thing with uh, World War II, Hitler advancing against Stalingrad, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay, all right, that, that, that's a lot of examples. Okay, then the attacker becomes unbalanced and falters because they can't sustain the momentum. You know, you can only attack for so long. You have only enough supplies, right? Supplies or resources to uh, to you know, sustain the attack, right? Because you, you're going to, you're going to, it's not unlimited supply. You don't have, you know, you have a long logistics tail. So, so that takes time, right? To, to supply the front line, right? To give, you know, equipment, men, supplies, whatever. Okay. So then it becomes, you know, it, it dies out just, just like a storm, just like the storm we had uh, yesterday. Is it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, right? You know, this, this quick, what do they call it? The cyclone bomb or whatever they call it, something, you know, meteorology. It just goes through, but then it doesn't last, right? You know, just like in previous chapters, we talked about, lots of talk about a heavy storm or rain does not last all day, right? Or the heavy winds does not blow all day, right? It doesn't last, okay? So then what happens is then the attacker trips over itself and falls. That means, you know, they encounter obstacles or whatever, or, um, you know, they, 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 they hit a, uh, uh, what it calls like a choke point or, you know, uh, uh, something and that they couldn't get around it or something. Okay. So, so then it stalls basically. Okay. So this is similar. What, 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 what Sun Tzu was the idea that the, the rationale behind his statement is that the best offense is a good defense. So rather than be the attacker, you, you know, have a good defense, you be the defender. Okay. And once you draw the attacker in okay okay and 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 and, and they no longer could sustain themselves then you could surround them or counterattack and so that's the best offense all right so the best offense is a good defense okay i mean they used a lot in sports this is an analogy they use in sports right like in football right football you know so if you have a great defense you can stifle the best offense in baseball same thing they say they also say, um, so, so baseball, the attacker, the offense is when you're the hitting, right? You're, you're at bat, you're at bat, you know, because that's how, that's how you score runs, right? Score points, right? And the, 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 the defender will be out in the field, right? The, what's it? Nine, nine players, nine players on the field, right? Anyway, okay. So they always say, and this is a, a, a baseball analogy or, or, or dictum or, or wisdom, they say, conventional wisdom in baseball, they say, Good pitching always overcomes good hitting, or it's always be, uh, surpasses good hitting. You know that? Yeah, good pitching. So that's why pitchers, if you have good pitcher, pitcher being the defense, you're on the defending team, the pitchers can always best beat out the best hitters. So the best pitchers can always win against the best hitters. And statistically, it's true because I mean, you know, baseball is, you know, especially when you're hitting a baseball traveling at, you know, almost 100 miles an hour, it's pretty, pretty difficult. So if you look at baseball, most batting averages, team batting averages are in the 200s, two, two, a little over 200, you know, 200 meaning uh, one out of five, one out of five, one out of five pitches, you know, the baseball 
they 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 hit they they hit that means they 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 hit the ball and they get on base okay now yeah they could they could hit the ball pop up you know into the air and then the defender would catch it so so that doesn't count as a hit so so one out of five you know that that's 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 considered average very average and the best hitting teams are only averaging about 270 to less than 300 okay less than 300 less point 10.3 point or 30 percent less than 30 percent okay it's it's like 200 uh 25 25 percent 27 percent that's statistics okay there's you know over the last 100 100 plus years of baseball okay so so that's the idea okay all right so <laughs> enough sports anyway okay okay but all right okay so but then th th this also applies on a personal level okay so so the above possibility can be applied in the quote unquote battles that's the adversities hardships obstacles problems etc in life okay so that is you know in these quote unquote social battles or life battles we let the other person keep talking yeah, just keep let, let them keep talking you know yeah 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 let them reveal their weaknesses shortcomings faults contradictions etc or inconsistencies etc you know you know when, when people keep talking 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 you know sooner or later they're gonna um run out of ideas or not run out of it, or run out of things to say or you know end up contradicting themselves or, or whatever okay so you know okay it's, okay so 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 it's better to let the the, the other side you know just let them keep talk okay talking and then observe you just have to observe listen carefully observe and then exploit those vulnerabilities meaning you know either inconsistencies etc or contradictions etc etc right okay so instead of rushing into action it is better to step back retreat that's to retreat a foot withdraw a foot calmly observe the situation, evaluate the circumstances and different options, and then act according and then respond according. So in life, that's the better option. So, you know, we shouldn't be aggressive. That's another way of saying, you know, we shouldn't be aggressive, you know, rather than be aggressive or, you know, uh, uh, initiate, you know, uh, 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 debates, arguments, whatever, okay? You know, rather than that, okay? So that, that's the, the idea, okay? That's the idea. Okay, so then, then there's a deeper understanding. So that's at a very, you know, this very social, external level. Okay, there's a deeper understanding of the host and advance an inch and the guest and the guest, okay, and retreat a foot. Okay, so there's just correspondence. Okay, the host being the active, the uh, and advancing, right? So, so the host is active, they're, they're advancing, right? They're advancing, okay, whereas the guest. It's passive, it's retreating. Okay. So, so, so here, here's, here's the, okay, here, here, here's the, 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 the idea. Okay. Hold on, whatever. Okay. Okay. Here. Uh, let's see. How, how does it, okay. Um, the host, an advance an inch, okay, represent the yang like qualities and actions, right? Because uh, the host is the, it, active, proactive. So that's a yang. That's a yang quality. Okay, that's a yang quality. And to advance, that means you're 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 uh, you're moving, right? You're moving. You know, moving forward, right? As advance means moving forward. Then that's also yang quality. Okay. While the guest being passive represents the yin, and retreating a foot that's going backwards, right? Or, you know, regressing or whatever, you know, represent the in-like qualities and actions. So in the battles, quote unquote, of life, the skillful Tao practitioners prefer the in-like traits over the yang-like traits, you know that? Okay, and, and here's some examples. We, we talked about it in, um, in uh, previous chapters, okay? The softest water overcomes the hardest rock. So, so, Soft is the yin quality, okay, yin quality. Hard is a yang quality. Okay, so in previous chapters, right, we, we know the water can overcome or, you know, erode, if you will, that's called erosion, er erode the rocks, you know, okay? So, so also humility instead of arrogance, humility is a yin quality, arrogance is a yang quality okay all right so so below instead of above right below is yin yin 
trait in characteristic. Above is a yang, right? Up, down, right? Behind instead of in front. Behind is the yin quality. In front, you know, is the yang quality. So, 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 you know, uh, example. We just talked about this a uh, couple of weeks ago, right? A couple of weeks ago. All right. Uh, sorry, right? Uh, uh, okay. These qualities that I just described, the soft over the hard, hum humility over there. Well, especially below instead of above and behind. So that was in section two of chapter 66. Okay, we talked about that. Okay, and then also calm instead of temperamental, right? Temperamental is the explosive, the active, the yang is the yang. Calm, serene is the, is the yin, okay? Uh, in quality, serenity over contention, right? Same idea, that's the yin and that's the yang. Peace over war, same thing, okay? Tranquility over violence, etc. cetera. So that's, that's from chapter 61, okay? From the fourth phrase of chapter 61 to below, okay? So, so which is the female always overcomes the male with serenity. So that's the yin over the yang, okay, all right? So the yang does not last, endure. The yin always endures. The yin qualities, okay, the yin-like qualities always endure, okay? They, they're longer lasting, whereas the yang-like qualities do not last, do not last long, okay? So, so that's, that's what it is, all right? So that's the, the, high, the, the more generic, higher level understanding, okay? So also, here's another higher level understanding, so we can then we can then uh, push it even further to the highest level. Is that this is is the on the internal level the host that's the active. Remember that's a yang like one. It's a metaphor for the conditional state or the attached state, the conditional mind, the attached mind. Okay, that's full of attachments, cleverness, desires, emotions, ego, etc. So it's filled up with all these 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 qualities, these very, very much, you know, yang-like qualities, okay? Whereas the guest huh, is, okay, is a metaphor for the non-attached or non-conditional mind, non-conditioned mind, okay? Now, this, and mostly, what, 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 what is it mostly closely? It's mostly close, it's most closely associated with the awakened or the Bodhi mind, okay? For example, such as the four immeasurable minds of bodhisattvas or the enlightened mind. All right, so 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 that's why Lao Tzu, uh, Lao Tzu said he would prefer referred he he okay Lao Tzu refers to an enlightened master who prefers or who is in the non-attached state of mind instead of the attached state of mind. Who, not, who does not dare to advance an inch, that means to be the aggressor or the, you know, the, the, the attacker, means not dare to do something based on attached actions, okay? That's that, okay? While retreating a foot or withdrawing a foot means to act with non-attached actions, okay? Because you're responding to. So that's the, the, the more the internal uh, definition. Okay, the, uh, on the external level, from the perspective of Lao Tzu, it would be better for a person to be calm observer and react to an attack or initiate, you know, uh, whatever in, uh, action, initiated action, rather than initiating an attack. So to be a defender instead of the attacker or a peacemaker rather than an aggressor. To withdraw from an attacker, observe calmly, and have them reveal their shortcomings, weaknesses, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's the external. Okay, now the internal is better to have a non conditioned or non attached mind. That's to reveal the retreat rather than to maintain a conditional or attached mind. That's to advance because a conditioned mind will cause turmoil and lead to the creation of karmic causes. Get it? and consequences, okay? So it's this, okay? A conditioned mind, that's you being the host, the get, uh, the attacker, the host, the, the proactive side, the, the initiator of things, you will create karmic causes and actions uh, and consequences because you created something. You you become the cause of something. And then that's the karmic. You are just 
uh, perpetuating the karmic cycle. Get it? Okay. Or cycle. So that's what it means. Okay. So the, on the external side, okay, here it is. Okay. It's in battles, you know, quote unquote, that, uh, you know, military literally battles or on the social, social aspect, you know, the battles in life, being the guest means letting the opponents reveal their strength. Let them reveal their strength. Then expose a weakness that you can then exploit. Okay, so that's that's the military side. Okay, whereas in life, this means never being the instigator or initiator or the aggressor. That is the host. You know, advances at advance an inch. That's the yang 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 quality. But always be the peacemaker. That's the guest. You retreat a foot. You know, you yield. You yield. Right. You yield a foot. That's a yin quality okay inequality right so so it's like you know comparing a uh, bamboo to a you know these strong trees that we have right yeah the tree is very strong but then when a strong wind comes what happens it snaps or topples it, right whereas a bamboo you know it looks it looks flimsy and uh, not flimsy but it looks kind of weak you know but when a strong wind comes it bends right it swing it bends with the wind but yet it doesn't snap Right, so it's the same idea. Okay, so on the internal, internal, uh, so that's external, or social, external, right? On the internal side, it just means have a non-attached mind instead of an attached mind. Okay, so for examples of the levels of a host dynamics, let's go to uh, Appendix A. All right, so this, is, okay, all right, here, here, here it is. Okay, these are just some. I mean, I call it some levels. It's just, it's just, just some degrees. Okay, so the level is. Uh, the host and the guest, okay? So on the basic level, the worldly level, okay? I call it the worldly basic. The host is the active side. It's a pre proactive. Whereas the guest is passive. It's reactive, okay? That's that's more specific. But let, let's look at the intermediate. We say, let's say, be a as a cultivator level, okay? The host is the yang, are the yang qualities, okay? Represent the yang. Whereas the guest represents the in qualities, you know, weak, soft, low, back, below, you know, gentle, humble, temperate, still, etc. Okay. All right. Now on the, that's, that's still, uh, that, that's, in, I say intermediate level. Then at the internal level or the intangible level, that's even higher. We're talking about something that's a little bit more abstract. The host represents the conditional mind or the attached mind, the conditional mind and uh, attached actions, okay, such as our egos, contrivance, right? That means we have uh, intentions, right? We have intentions, right? And we have agendas, you know, we have an objective, a goal, attachments, etc. Whereas the guest represents the non-conditioned mind and the actions. That's no ego, egoless, no non-intentions, you know, you don't have any given intentions, you know, you know, it's also intentions are driven by the ego, right? And you have no agendas and you have no attachments, et cetera. Okay, so that's, that's, that's what the host and the guest represent, you know, different levels, okay? All right, so let's go back. Uh, let's go to section two. Okay, so we're done with section one. Let's go to the analysis of section, okay, section two. Okay, so now we're, uh, I have about half, half an hour. Okay, so. So here's the analysis, okay, or, or or you can say expansion of section one of what he was talking about. Rather, uh, you know, be the guest rather than the host. You know, with withdraw or retreat a foot rather than advance an inch. So what he's saying is this is he's more expanding on, on the first section, first line. He's saying he's this is called marching in formation without formation. You know, it's like very par paradoxical. It seems raising arms without arms charging or grappling enemies without enemies, grasping weapons without weapons. Oh, yeah, well, what's this? You know, it's like, it sounds very, you know, contradictory, right? You know, how can you march without a formation, right? You know, that's not called marching, right? Okay, all right, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll get to this, okay? All right, it's a metaphor. These are all metaphors, okay? So uh, on a general level, okay, I call it, marching in formation is a metaphor for the journey of life. Okay, now, general, I'm not talking about military, military level, right? Military, okay, okay, all right. It's marching in formation. It's a metaphor for our individual journeys 
of life. Okay, this is about the quote journey of a thousand miles unquote. Right, that's from chapter sixty-four. Right, okay. Now, without formation means without discipline and regulated action or and direction. So you could say, or you know, with with or without purpose, with no purpose. Okay, yeah. So so now you get the metaphor. So so in life, in our journey of life, it means, huh? In in our journey of life, you know, a lot of times, and if you see, especially, right? Uh, you know, uh, you know. For most, for most, very few people in their journeys of life, you know, know where they're going, right? Know what, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, no, no, they, they, they have ambitions. Yeah, they have goals and say, oh, yeah, you know, I want to be a millionaire or I want to get married or I want, you know, whatever, whatever. That, that, that's, that's, not, that's not what Lao Tzu is talking about, having goals. Or, it just means ultimately, what is your direction, you know, right? What, what, what is their direction? You know, if you, if you continue to pursue these, you know, material things, you know, worldly goals, material goals, aims. It's just, what? Perpetuating the cycle of karma, right? The karmic cycle, okay? So, so what Lao Tzu is talking about, what is your ultimate? What's the ultimate direction, ultimate goal, ultimate destination that you want to get at, okay? So that's what this marching information is about, okay? Now, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's basically, I want to say, on the world level, or, you know, most society, society, most people go through life without a concrete plan, purpose, okay? They are moving about, but wandering aimlessly in life without any disciplined approach, purpose, or meaning. So that means not information. So Lao is describing, saying, hey, you know, most people in life, throughout their lives, you know, they're just, you know, going through the motions, you know, yeah, they're, they're pursuing worldly, you know, goals, objectives, whatever, you know, but ultimately they still do not have the true purpose, you know, true direction. Okay. Right. Right. You know, so, so in a sense, this, this kind of corresponds to the true meaning of life, right. The true meaning of life. Okay. What, what is your, you know, what is your aim, right. What is the goal, right. All right. So now, on the, I call it on the intermediate level, that means, uh, you know, you're above the worldly level a little bit. That means Tao cultivators, although Tao cultivators have a purpose that they do, they, they realize what is the ultimate, you know, you know, goal or whatever, you know, destination. They have already spent time thinking about it. You know, they have pondered it, you know, contemplate about it. So they are calm and prepared, even when things or circumstances change, but they do so without ulterior motives, unlike those whose actions are motivated or have, you know, have attachment. Get it? Okay. So they do things without ulterior motives because they do, th because they, as cultivators, I'm talking about cultivators, Tao cultivators, because they realize that, you know, you know, you have this notion of uwe, you know, non-attachment. You know, you do things non-conditionally, okay? Because if you do things conditionally, that creates karma. That, that plants the seeds. That's how karma starts, okay? Okay, because you have an attached uh, mind or attached condition, okay? Ah, uh, sorry, attached uh, action, okay? All right, so that's how, all right? So now at the higher level, at the higher level, so, you know, what Lao Tzu also has a definition for higher level, very high, the ultimate level. That's I call it internal intangible. Okay, but for Tao masters, that's for sages now. Okay, uh, you know, you know, not just cultivators, but you know, masters. You know, you can say enlightened beings. Okay, they act. That's the march information without attachments or conditions or motives. So it seems, it appears to to the worldly observer, to world, as if they go through life. That is the sages, the enlightened being, go through life without any direction that is a fixed approach, a fixed goal. You know, say, oh, I want to be a you know, millionaire by age 30. I want to be a billionaire by age 50, whatever, whatever, okay? So that's the marching in formation without formation. It seems to, you know, to most worldly observers that these sages, you know, you guys, you know, you guys have no purpose in life. You know, you guys, you know, you guys don't want to, you know, to get rich. You guys don't want to have fame. You guys don't want to have power, you know, whatever, whatever, okay, you know? You know, you don't want to collect, you know, material things, you know, assets, you know, you know, wealth, whatever. Okay. Cars, houses, land, property, whatever. You know, you guys don't have, you know, you guys don't have a goal. It appears that way, but their aim is higher, right? For the Tao masters, right? For the enlightened beings, their aim is not material goals or objectives, right? Their final destination is to what? Transcend, right? Reincarnation or transcend, you know, you know, to go to the higher level. Okay. 
But so it's although they may have not appear to have any, maybe I should put worldly, worldly, okay, worldly or material objectives, okay. But they are congruent with the Tao. They naturally reflect their true selves without any contrivance or agenda. That's the most ideal. So, you know, they naturally reflect the Buddha nature, the, the Tao, if you will, all right, without any contrivance, with, with non attachment, without any conditions, okay, et cetera, all right, or agendas. Okay, or goals. What's that? That's okay. So that's what I mean. Okay, so that's the first phrase: marching in formation without formation. Okay, so that's 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 the higher level, the more intangible aspect. Okay, now the second phrase is raising arms without arms. What does that mean? Okay, literally, just means arm. You know, your your physical arms. Okay, now what what? Oh, let's see. Did I did I did I did I mention here? Uh, oh, okay, okay. That that's fine. That's fine. I did it. Okay. Um, Okay, now, okay, it literally means, it just means getting things done, you know, do, doing something, you know, getting things done. Actions represents actions, the metaphor. So the basic meaning of raising arms about, that means raising arms to seize or fight without using one's arms. That, that's the literal, you know, meaning, okay, literal, you know, def, you know like in the military, you know, and using the military, you know, you, you, uh, you, you know, you, 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 you use your arms, right? When, you, when you're fighting, right? When you're fighting an enemy, right? You have to use your arms, right? <laughs> okay, anyway, okay. So it's like fighting an enemy without you, you raising your arms, without using your arms, okay? So it's a metaphor, but what, what, it, what it means here is more generic, more general, which means it's you take action without getting anything done, without accomplishing anything. Yeah, okay, all right. So on the worldly level, okay, we say most people go through life without taking decisive action to get things done. Most people act out of the necessity of the moment without thinking things through. So they end up in contention with others, right? So, so that's what happens. Most, most of us, we, you know, we do things when it's necessary, you know, when it's absolutely have to do, you know, we have to get it done. We have to do it, okay? But, but, but unfortunately, we don't take decisive we don't have a bigger we don't see the bigger picture we don't see the picture we only see the moment right at, you know in front of us see the situation in front of us and then we just act out of necessity okay so so what happens is that's very short term that's very short. you can say that's reacting to the situation in a sense that's true but it's very short term i mean or short-sighted okay because you're just looking at the situation right now you don't know you, you don't know what's going to play out, you know, in the future or next, you know, the next level. Okay. So, so what happens is when you do that, you end up in contention with others. Okay. All right. That, that's, that's the danger. Okay. When you react or act out of necessity of the moment. Okay. Because without thinking to without seeing the big picture. Okay. Without seeing the big picture. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, I don't want to use, I mean, if I use a negative example, it's like, you know, let's say, you are starving. Let, let, let's just say, let's just say, let's just say. So instead of say, you know, let, let's just say, okay. I mean, this is, I mean, maybe it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not an example that would apply to most of us, but, but, but it's an extreme case. Let, let's say you, you know, I say you're starving or you could be a drug addict or whatever. I, I got alcoholic. Okay. Alcoholic. So, you know, you crave alcohol, you know? Okay. So right. You know, why, when that desire hits you, you know, you just do it. You just grab it without realizing that, oh, you know, there's a consequence, right? You know, you know, to that action. Okay. So, so it's like that. Okay. All right. So additional meaning now on the intermediate level, beyond the little bit worldly level, we have the Tao cultivators act deliberately. You know, they act with purpose in other words. Okay. With, according to plan or with purpose, but without harming or contending with anyone. So it is as if they take decisive action without attempting to do to their, do to their foresight. You know, so you, they, they see the longer picture, the longer view, they have a longer view, okay? They understand that, hey, actions have consequences, right? You know, okay, actions have. So therefore you act deliberately with purpose, but you don't want to harm or, you know, harm anything, harm anybody or end up in contention. Okay, so so that's that's it. Just means more careful. Okay, be more careful. <laughs> okay, or more deliberate. You know, you know, in your actions, or, or or when we talk, same idea. Okay, all right. 
Now, there's a deeper level, obviously. It's this, okay? Deeper level understanding of raising arms about arms. It's to eliminate all negative feelings, to overcome oneself, to overcome one's six roots, you know, six roots, six senses, okay? So it's similar to those, to quote, those who overcome themselves are mighty, unquote. That's in chapter 33, all right? Fourth phrase, okay? So that's raising arms about, that's the higher level, okay? So now at the intangible level, internal intangible level, raising arms, arms are a metaphor for actions, right? For, so for Tao masters, sages, they act decisively, decisively by applying non-attached, non-conditioned actions because they have already overcome themselves. So it seems as if they get things done without taking action, okay? So it seems that, okay? It seems like that way, okay? So that's the highest level. All right, let's look at the third phrase. Third phrase is says, charging or grappling with enemies without enemies. So grappling enemies without enemies. You know, you're, 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 you're engaging them, okay? Now, to charge or grapple without enemies is another metaphor, okay? So that's, that, that's a military, you know, that's a military reference, but, you know, because when you have to, fight the enemy, you have to do hand-to-hand -hand combat or, you know, you know if, you, if, you, if you find it, engage them, you know, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? Okay. So that's a metaphor. That's on the military side. But on the general side, it's, it's, it's a metaphor for problems people usually wish to avoid, ignore, or put up or sweep under the rug. You know, yeah, in life, right? Most, most of us will encounter sometimes, oh, they're, you know, they're just either problems, issues, or people or things or whatever, that, you know, that uh, we avoid, we want to, you know, we, we, we don't want to uh, deal with, okay, we don't want to deal with, right, we want to, to sweep under the rug or put off, right, okay, you know, procrastinate, whatever, okay, so at the worldly level, most people go through life without coming to grip with difficult problems, is it grip or grips, yeah, it doesn't matter, okay, without coming to grip with difficult problems. Most are not able to overcome their own inertia. You know, we procrastinate, you know, you know, we wear couch potatoes, you know, we don't, you know, we, we, we just, you know, there, there's just some things that we don't, we don't like to deal with, right? We want to avoid, we want to, you know, just ignore it, sweep it under the rug. Okay. So that's, that's, that's us. Okay. Now most of us are like that. Okay. Now at the intermediate level, Tao cultivators in the Tao, who's the enemy? Okay. So, 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 so when we say, you know, the problems, the problems are the enemy. Okay. That, that maybe I should, I, I should, sorry, I, I should, I should say, okay. So enemy means li uh, literally that word means adversary, enemy opponent. Okay. Or, you know, it could be a verb too, but, but in this context, it means it's a noun. It represents adversities, challenges, obstacles, problems, etc. So it's a metaphor. Also not that, 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 that's, that's the general worldly level at the more higher level. It represents, it's a metaphor for all non-Dao-like traits, such as our egos, our six roots, negativity, you know, emotions, you know, temper, temper, temper tantrums, you know, greed, lust, all that, okay? All that negative non-Dao-like traits, okay? So that's the enemy. That's the enemy within, right? Within each one of us, right? Okay, all right, so, so, so sorry, okay, I, 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 didn't, I didn't go. So uh, at the intermediate level, the enemy is a metaphor for all the noun thou like traits, you know, greed, rage, ignorance, that's the three poisons, right? Et cetera, et cetera, you know, whatever, egos, whatever, okay? So thou cultivators deal with every, everyday problems though without any negativity, any non thou like traits, get it? Okay, now at the, just another level, okay, here's the higher, the, the, the basically, this okay another level on the internal so that's the intermediate level previously now it's at the more intangible level is that enemies are a metaphor for one's ego so that that's even you know because the ego is kind of intangible right okay and, you know it's the me myself and i where the greatest enemy is within oneself that's one's ego okay so with a non-conditioned mind right non-conditioned non-attached mind there is no ego to overcome because you're, you, you don't, you're not attached to an ego. There's no such thing. No, no longer. Okay. So, all right. So since one has already overcome oneself, that's the false self or the enemy. Okay. That's because there's no more, because you have overcome your false self. Your enemy. So there's no longer an ego, right? To, to that. Okay. Now this is because, okay, a non-conditioned mind 
or non-attached mind is congruent, or you can say conforms to or in accordance with one's conscience. Yeah, it's congruent to kind of one or one's true self, the Buddha nature, okay, and the Tao. So that's what a non-conditioned mind, non-attached mind, okay, it's congruent, okay. So it seems as if the Tao masters or sages are able to deal with things, right, problems, things, without any ego. That's the charging or grappling enemies without enemies. Get it? Okay. So, all right. So the first enemy represents, you know, problems. And the second one means enemy means your ego, you know, stuff like that. Okay. All right. All right. So, all right. So let's look at the last phrase, grappling weapons without weapons. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. This is important to say. What's the definition of Okay, being literally means soldier. It just literally it means soldier. I mean, it's in the first section, okay, the definition. But in this case, it means weapons, okay? That's more general, more generic. Or military, you can mean re, re, so, anything associated with the military, okay? Okay, so they are, but in this case, the weapons are a metaphor for tools, just tools, any type of tools, utensils, tools, methods, you know, whatever, okay? So the right tool is for the right job. So sometimes you have to use the right tool for the right job, right? When you want to hammer a nail, you use a hammer. I mean, hammer a nail. When you want to, you know, when you want to, you know, put something together, nail something together, right? You, 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 you use a hammer. You don't have to use a sledgehammer. You use a hammer. That's good enough, right? Okay. So anyway, all right. So just so, 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 so where the military connection comes from, it's just like, just as a general uses the army, you know, to achieve a military objective, right? Okay, or military force, you can say, to use the appropriate tool to accomplish your objective in life. So, so that's that's the metaphor. Okay, so that's the okay. So on the worldly level, most people go through life using tools, right? We use tools, right? We use methods. Okay, that's the grasping weapons. Okay, we use you know tools, what you know, whatever you know, means, methods, whatever. Okay, all right, to achieve their goals but we don't use them properly without using proper. So, so that's when we say grappling, grappling the enemies without, uh, grappling the weapons without weapons. Sometimes we're, you're using the tools, we're grappling the tools, right? We're using the tools, but we're not using the tools properly, okay? So it's like, it's like as though that you don't have tools without tools, okay? So saying that again, okay? All right. So when things don't work, the tool is not to blame. We don't, we should not blame the tool. We may need to just get a better tool, different tool, or just to improve our skills. Okay. So that's, so we shouldn't blame the tool, right? <laughs> it's like that. Okay. So, 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 you know, so, you know, so we have, you know, rather we should say, Hey, maybe we're not using the right tool, the right method or the right approach or whatever. Okay. Or maybe we need to improve our skills, et cetera. Okay. So on the intermediate level, okay. Uh, intermediate level, the weapons are a metaphor for what? Wealth, status, and power. So that's a, a little bit more specific. I mean, but more, more on the Tao, Tao, you know, in the Tao sphere. Okay, or the Tao, you know, the Tao, Tao description. Okay, of 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 of, of, of the material world uh, of material world. Okay, so the weapons are metaphors for or represent wealth. You know, that's money, status, fame, and power. Okay, so that's what it represents. Okay, so while Tao cultivators will achieve their life objectives, but we don't rely on, that's the grasping, the wealth, status, or power. That's the weapons or the tools. Okay, so, so as Tao cultivators, we can achieve our life's objectives, even material, in, in the material aspect, but we don't have to rely on wealth, status, and power. So, so that, that, what, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, to be a Tao cultivator, you do not need, it's not a necessary condition for a Tao cultivator to rely on wealth, status, or power. Because then that's an excuse. Because I can say, hey, if you're poor, you can say, hey, I have no wealth, no status, no power. So why should I be a Tao cultivator? How can I be a Tao cultivator? Right? So same idea, right? Okay, so, so Tao cultivators can achieve our objectives without relying on, you know, the wealth, status, or power, right? Whereas most people on the worldly level, you know, if you look at, you know, you know, I don't say famous, you know, wealthy people, whatever, powerful people, whatever, they have to rely on these. Get it? Okay. All right. All right. So now the higher level and the internal, I call it internal intangible, it's this. Uh, 
Uh, where, 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 where? Okay, all right, it's this, it's that. With a conditioned or attached mind, then your thoughts, that's the tools, okay, that's the tools, are like weapons. Yeah, so if you have a conditional attached mind, right, then your thoughts are your weapons. It makes sense, okay? Whereas with a non-conditioned mind, non-attached mind, all your thoughts, that's the tools, are in accord with your conscience, with your Buddha nature and Tao. So your thoughts are not weapons, no longer weapons, all right? Make sense? So it seems as if Tao masters, sages, aligned people, they can achieve the goals without any attached thoughts of relying on any tools, in this case, tools like weapons, you know, like wealth, status, or power, the weapons. So that's the grasping weapons without weapons because, an enlightened person or Tao master, they rely on their true self nature, the Buddha nature instead. All right. Okay. So the implication is this. I'm almost out of time here. Okay. So most people move through life or go through life without any discipline approach. That's to march in formation, a uh, march, march in formation without formation. All right. Or marching in formation without. Okay. While Tao cultivators have discipline and purpose. So they do have. You can say a direction, right? I mean, a direction, right? And a, and, and a, and a non-worldly purpose, okay? Anyway, so most people act without thinking things through. That's to raise arms without arms. While, because the arms represent the actions, right? Okay. While Tao cultivators act with purpose or deliberation. You, know, you, have a, you, have a, you have a purpose, okay? Whereas most people cannot deal with different problems because they cannot overcome their negativity. That's the grappling enemies without enemies, okay? While Tao cultivators are able to deal with problems, enemies, okay? Without any negativity, enemies, okay? So most people use wealth and power. That's the tools. That's the grasping weapons or the tools to achieve their goals without using them properly. So that's weapons uh, without weapons, okay? While Tao cultivators achieve without relying on wealth, status, or power, weapons, okay? All right, okay? So on the external side, uh, okay, wow, there's a lot here, okay? All right, so because Tao masters are in tune with the Tao, congruent to Tao or to the Buddha nature, and are in the non-attached or non-conditioned state, they appear to go through life without any purpose. That's the marching in formation without formation. They appear to get things done without taking any action, raising arms without arms. They appear to deal with things without any ego, charging or grappling enemies without enemies. They appear to achieve goals without any attached thoughts of achieving them by wealth, status, or power, the weapons or the tools. That's the grasping weapons without weapons. Now, on the internal, that's, you can say that's external. Internally, they are able to overcome their false selves. Okay, that's how it's done. Okay, so let's go to part one. Okay, so there are four strategies of life. Okay, so there are four strategies. Now, now, what Lao Tzu was using is the using the military of strategies of life, right? Rather be the host, uh, sorry, rather be the guest than the host, rather to withdraw or retrieve a foot then advance an inch. Okay, so so he's explaining those four uh, that 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 military you know dictum or saying. Okay, or you can say yeah truism or whatever. Okay, so the first one is marching in formation without formation. That means at the Tao cultivated level, we have to have a plan, even if no one else does. Okay, or just in general life, in the worldly realm. Okay, we 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 should have some kind of plan, right? Something. So, but that more advanced level, okay, it's that. You appear to go through life without any fixed approach, a rigid, rigid, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're fixated on something. You know, that's the condition. Okay, that's the conditional. Okay, up here, all right. Two, you raise arms without arms. Okay, so that means you, you arms represent. Remember to act actions. Okay, actions. Okay, so, so, so in this case, arms. The first arms represent a noun. The second one represents a verb. Okay, same thing here. Okay, same thing here. Noun verb okay so first one is a noun second one is a verb okay all right so so taking decisive action even if no one else does okay so we have to you know as Tao cultivators or, or just in life we have to take a, we have to 
you know, have a purpose, act deliberately, right? With purpose, not randomly, okay? But at the more advanced level, it just means when you act non-conditionally, it means you appear to get things done without taking action, okay? You're non-attached, action, okay? Uh, grasping or grappling enemies without enemies, okay? So it means proactively deal with problems most people wish to ignore or to put out. Now, this is going to be, we're going to talk about a little bit more. I, yeah, yeah, I guess on, on this side. Uh, actually, yeah, actually, it's all related here, I mean, these four items, but uh, the, at least the first two, the first, uh, the first uh, sorry, the first, uh, the second and third. Uh, uh, maybe on chapter 70, I think 71, chapter 71, which is without fault. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, okay. okay, it just means act proactively deal with problems most people wish to avoid on it because we have to. Okay, we, we, we have to deal because there are going to be problems. Okay, that's life, right? Okay, all right. At the more advanced level, it just means that we appear to deal with matters, things, okay, in life without any negativity, any ego. Example would be ego. Okay. All right. Now, what's grasping? What's grasping are uh, weapons without weapons. It means bring the right tools to bear and help you accomplish the first three, the, the three I, the first three. Okay. The, the, the you know, again, making a plan, taking decisive action, and dealing with problems. Okay. So you have to use the right tools. Okay. So so that's 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 what it means. Okay. That more advanced level, it just means appear to achieve our goals without any weapons, any tools, which is relying on wealth, status, and power, right? Okay, all right. Okay, so that's what we should do. Okay, now that was summary one, right? Okay, so let's, okay, so now let's go to the conclusion. Okay, the, the third section. So there is no greater disaster than to underestimate the enemy. Underestimate, underestimating the enemy almost made me lose my treasure. So so now, remember, he's talking just from a military, right? He's talking about the military. Yeah, so on the military side, you know, all, you know if you're a military strategist or planner, right? You you can never underestimate the enemy, right? Okay, so 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 that's disaster, okay? And, and throughout history, we, we've seen that, okay? All right, so, and then, but then the, the second half is underestimate that all made me lose time. <laughs> so, so it's a little bit cryptic. What's that? I lose my treasure. So, so he's not talking about the military. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, in a sense, if you underestimate an enemy, an enemy okay, sometimes you're going to be defeated, right? Get defeated or understand your opponent. Then you could lose your treasure. What's your treasure? Your life. Okay, so that's at a very, very, you know, superficial understanding, you know, based on military, okay, military. But Lao Tzu, you know, you know, obviously has, 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 has higher, you know, has different meaning, okay? Uh, let's see, let's see, uh, let's see, okay. The basic meaning of the first phrase at the military level is, yeah, there's no greater disaster than to, to regard the enemy lightly, right? We've seen that throughout history, right, okay? Now, at the external side, though, Okay, there's a, you know, a, a external, you know, a, at the worldly level or we can say social sphere or whatever, there is no greater misfortune than to underestimate challenges or problems. That's the enemy, remember, right? We talked uh, talk about in the previous section, what the enemy that we encounter in life. This means to be cautious and not treat things frivolously. Okay, Qing Bo, okay, that's you know, frivolous, okay? We just say, oh, you know, that's life, you know, I don't want to deal with it, you know, whatever, okay? Deal with it lightly, huh? Okay, oh, well, 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 I'll get to it in chapter 63, but anyway, okay. So here it is coming ahead, okay? All right? The For Tao cultivators, it means being cautious and reserved while treating all challenges with a sense of seriousness or gravitas, okay? They never assume that problems are easy to solve or the challenges are easy to overcome, right? Remember, okay, chapter 63. One who makes promises lightly must deserve little trust. One who sees many easy tasks must encounter much difficulties. So we don't treat things, you know, lightly, okay, or frivolously, okay? Then there's another level too, but anyway, uh, let's see, I'll get to, yeah, yeah, I'll do it next, okay? It's, at the internal level, on the internal side, okay, so one's external, the first one's more external than the Tao masters never underestimate or regard the ego, that's the enemy, lightly, okay? We have to be very uh, aware, cautious about our egos, okay? 
they never regard lightly or underestimate the responses of the six roots. Yeah, the six roots are very, you know, very, very, very strong, right? Their, their, their responses are very strong. You know, the desires, okay, the attractions, you know, are very strong, right? We see something we like, we just, oh, it's, you know, it's hard to, <laughs> to turn your eyes away, right? Or we hear something that we like to hear or whatever, you know, it's hard to not to, you know, want to listen to it more, all right? So same idea, okay? All right, okay. So, so here it's similar to chapter 26, okay, which is sages travel an entire day without leaving the heavy supplies, okay? That's third or fourth phase of chapter 26, all right? We talked about that. Okay, that means they don't deal, you know, treat things lightly, especially the ego or, or, or the six roots. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the second phrase, second half. It's, uh, let's see, any particular meaning here? Okay, about what's uh, underestimating the enemy almost made me lose my treasures. Okay, what's the basic meaning? Uh, uh, okay, okay, here, all right. Now, we, uh, uh, okay, besides the military, okay, I talked about military, losing your life, okay, that's your treasure, okay, that losing a life, okay, so that's, that's, okay, besides that, okay, there's more, that's more specific. By regarding the enemy lightly, or, you know, times any problems, egos, negative stuff, okay, we um, will almost lose their three treasures. What's the, what's the treasures? The, the treasure. Now, he didn't say three treasures. He just said treasure. Okay. So what are the three treasures? Right? In the Tao. Remember? Just previous chapter. Chapter 67. What's one? Compassion, conservation, and not daring to be your foremost. That's section two, chapter 67. Okay. So, so the, an example of the treasures would be this. Okay. For the Tao. For the Tao master. Because that's, that's what Lao Tzu was talking about in chapter 67. Right? Okay, these three items, okay, three components, okay? So, so now, how do we, how, 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 how can we be sure that, that, that Lao Tzu was talking about these three treasures? How, how can we be sure? You know, or, or you know, what's, a, what's, a, you know, what's an example that, oh yeah, you know, make, you know, he's talking about these three treasures. Okay, here, okay, on the external side, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Uh, where is it? Okay, where is it? Okay, here. On the externally, okay. So let's go. Let's start with the back. Not daring to be the fourth, the third treasure. That's by underestimating a challenge, right? We underestimate a challenge. That goes hand in hand with arrogance. Arrogance. Yeah, we understand, right? We're you know we say, oh, I know, you know, that's easy. That's easy, right? You know, that's easy. Hey, I, I I can do it. You know, I know it. You know, whatever. Okay. Which means to lose your humility. So that's not daring to be the foremost in the world. Get it? Okay, yeah. So, so a lot of times when we underestimate things, right? Uh, you know, especially, right? We underestimate a challenge, a problem, whatever. Okay, an obstacle, whatever, an enemy. Okay, whatever. Okay, that's because it's derived from our arrogance. Okay, we're arrogant. We think we know. We think we, you know, we can do it without effort or whatever. Okay, we we think. Okay, all right. That. What's the arrogance? What's arrogance? What's the opposite of arrogance? That means we lost our humility. That means it's not daring to be the foremost in the world. Get it? Chapter 69. So now, so, so once we have the arrogance, once we, we head down that path, once we underestimate a challenge with arrogance, right? We have arrogance, okay? Then, oh, so if we think too little of the effort required because you are too much of yourself, then we lose humility. Okay. So, so that's, 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 that's the, that's the first, sorry, that's the third. Okay. All right. Now, so once we have that arrogance, okay, or pride, whatever, that's leads to number two. That's number two. Hubris. That means hubris. Arrogance means hubris. We have pride. Okay. Pride, hubris, pride. Yeah, yeah. That leads to underestimation and lack of preparation, right? Yeah. Once we, you know, if we have if we are arrogant, we think we know it. We think we can do it with little effort or almost no effort. Then you, you, you're not prepared. You don't have to prepare. You say, oh, I don't need to prepare that, prepare for that. I don't need to, to, uh, to, uh, to evaluate, you know, to think carefully about what to do or whatever. Okay. So what happens is if we, rat, we are so rash and we try to do it without preparation or try to deal with, with, with the enemy, okay, you know, or the problem, right? You know, without preparation, without proper, uh, you know, without deliberate, you know, uh, uh, purpose or thinking or whatever, 
we end up wasting our time, energy, and resources. Therefore, it's the loss of conservation. And you know, some people can translate this, remember in chapter six, as frugality. Frugality is very narrow. Conservation is a little bit broader. Okay, so, so you know, frugality, or some people say economic, you know, ec economy, <laughs> economy, okay, means uh, efficiency, okay, that's, that's very narrow, okay, so conservation is broader, okay, so that's what it means, okay, so, so that means we end up wasting time, energy, resources, whatever, we go into different directions, you know, right? we dig 10 wells, you know, sh shallowly instead of digging one well deep, you know, stuff like that, so that's the loss of conservation, so that's the second, that's the second treasure that we lose, okay, so once we, we have the third and second, then how does it go to the third? Uh, first, it leads to frustration. Yeah, we, we expend so much time. We've spent so much time, energy, resources, whatever, you know, and yet we can't achieve it. We can't get it done, okay, or, or whatever, okay, meet our goals. So what happens? This leads to frustration, which in turn leads to losing our temper due to all our wasted efforts, time, energy, resources, et cetera. And what that, that losing our temper means? It's an anger or rage that disconnects you from compassion. So it means you have lost your compassion. Make sense? So that's why we say, you know, he, you know, we can, based on this scenario, you know, this is a very generic scenario of what the, the process plays out, right? How it plays out. You know, we can say, yeah, you know, even Lao Tzu did not specifically mention three treasures. He just said, my treasure, lose my, you know, we can point to that. Yeah, you know, it, yeah, you know, he, he's talking about this, you know, you no, know, he can talk about, okay, all right, make sense? So he's talking, okay, all right, so, all right, okay, where are we? All right, okay, uh, I have like 10 more minutes, 15 more minutes, okay, so five more minutes. Okay, so I, 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 I'll I do the conclusion soon. Okay, so ex and the external side is just as for the military, it is a great disaster to regard challenges, that's the enemies, in life frivolously or lightly, okay? Likewise, Tao cultivators, ne Tao cultivators never underestimate the challenges or problems in life. They would rather underpromise and overdeliver on the challenges they face. So the greatest misfortune that results from underestimating the six roots, that's our enemies, is to lose the three treasures. That's, okay, that's more, uh, it's still external, okay? But uh, there's an internal aspect, okay, internal aspect. Okay, it's Tao masters or sages never underestimate the challenges of the ego. That's the enemy because they know that leads to losing their conscience and state of awareness of their Buddha nature essence. Okay, okay, that's the three treasures. Okay, because the ego will then what smother or overcome our conscience or overcome the state of awareness of our Buddha nature. Okay, makes sense. All right, so. It's, it's also in chapter 26, okay? We say similar to, to, to be light or to treat things uh, under, you know, enemy, underestimate or regard things lightly is to lose one's root, okay? And root, in this case, does not mean the six roots. <laughs> it means our, our Buddha nature essence, okay? Or conscience, you can say that, okay? All right, that, that's, the, that's the second to the last line, okay? Or phrase, okay? Chapter 26. Now, okay, here uh, we have the second half of the third section. So when evenly matched armies meet, the side that is compassionate shall win, okay, or shall prevail, okay? So, uh, okay, so, so, yeah, so he's saying, okay, all right, so, so what the meaning is this, on a military, okay, you can say, when two armies of equal strength, okay, square off on a battlefield, Okay, so, so that's using the military. He's also using military metaphors now, okay? Because, this, this, because the title of this, this, this chapter is using the military, okay? That's a metaphor for life. In life, we will encounter lots and lots of enemies, problems, challenges, obstacles, etc. So when a great challenge meets with great determination, that's the evenly matched, okay? Yeah, you have both a great challenge and a great will or determination that, that both sides are evenly matched in strength. So that's what, that's what Lao Tzu is saying. So he says in life, we have to in, deal with challenges, great challenges, but with great determination or will. Okay. All right. Okay. So the meaning is, okay, is this, is that on one side, that's the opposing army. Okay. It's the challenge you face in life. 
And on the other side, that's your army. It's your determination to overcome that challenge in life. Okay, so you need both. I mean, you need, you need to have, you, you know, you need to have a great determination. You know, we can say equal to that challenge. So our will or our determination must be equal, if not greater than that challenge. Okay, all right. So, so if, okay, so if we want to triumph over the great challenge, that's the opposing army, then you need great determination or effort, okay, or effort in order to resolve that problem or that challenge. So everything else being equal in life, when the challenge is great and your, determin deter and your determination is also great, which side will prevail? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, we have two opposing sides. Now, which side is going gonna, is gonna to win out? Ah, so that's what Lao Tzu wants to provide the answer, okay? So anyway, so further understanding is that in order to be victorious over the strong challenge, that's a difficult problem, obstacle, et cetera, you must have an equally strong resolve. So how does one do it? Yeah, that's what Lao Tzu, he, he actually answered it in the last phrase, okay? So uh, now this word, I, literally it means sorrow, grief. Yeah, literally uh, as a noun, okay, sorrow, grief. Okay, or adjective to be mournful, to be pitiful, or, an, or it could be a verb to grieve for, to lament, to pity something. But in this context, it doesn't mean pity or grief. Because if you translate it, it goes on the side that is, the side that is, has sorrow shall win. That doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't make sense, right? The side that has sorrow, right? 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 If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you translate this word as sorrow, so the side that is sorrow or it's grieving shall win. That doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't make sense, right? So, so it doesn't mean that. What, what it means contextually is compassion. Passion for something greater than oneself. Now, now, compassion, I'm not talking about the lower level compassion. Remember we talked about in chapter 67, the three treasures, right? What's, what's compassion, right? Remember, it's a greater love. It's like altruism, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's love greater than yourself, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. all right? Okay, all right, so, so. So now let, let's look at this, okay? So the basic meaning of the last phrase is that the side that has compassion, not sorrow, not grief, shall win, okay? So what does that mean, okay? So here it says, is the side that is compassionate is a metaphor for fighting with purpose, something worth fighting for. So by having compassion in your fight against the challenge, you will win, okay? And where do we get that? Chapter 67, if one fights with compassion, then victory. Get it? Okay. Now, he, now in this kind of chapter 67, this is si. Si is, it means compassion, uh, kindness, mercifulness. Yeah, you can say also mercy. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what it is. Okay. All right. So now additional meaning in last phrase is that, of the last phrase is that in life, when both the challenge and your determination are great, you know, are equal, which side will prevail? What will determine which side will triumph? What will determine? Only when you have a purpose. You have something worth fighting for. Have the ultimate purpose of your life. Then you will prevail. Okay, the ultimate purpose. Then now the key. Okay, we want to. This is more higher level. Okay, now. So the further understanding of, mm, okay, here is of grief or sorrow or sadness. That's a metaphor for the non now, this is deeper. This is more deeper and uh, higher level, a little bit higher level. Understanding of, of sorrow or, or we say, you know, we say passion, compassion is, is a metaphor for the non-confrontational, non-violent, gentle, and soft approach. That's in chapter 43. The softest things of the world override the hardest things of the world. All right. Okay. That's first and two lines, first two phrases of chapter 43. All right. Okay. So that's what the sorrow is a metaphor for. It's being something that's non-confrontational, non-violent, gentle. The in, the in. Okay, so, so I, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's why it, it ties back to the first, first, first section, first line. Okay, so the implication is this. To ensure your victories in life, right? right that's the two battles, the battles, right? It, it, facing off against Alan. Make sure your actions are driven by your purpose in life. When using the army is to be true to oneself or to face oneself, you know, okay? So let's look at, okay, we're almost at the end, okay? So bear with me a little bit. Chapter uh, part two is this, okay? Three keys to abide by, okay, in life, in dealing with problems. Number one, 
dare not advance an inch, but prefer to retreat a foot. That means never advance with regression, uh, with aggression, okay, or never initiate aggression or you know be the instigator. Back away with courtesy. Yeah, you can retreat. You know, you can back off with courtesy. That's okay. That's okay. Give others plenty of room. Yeah, give them space. Okay. Use non-attach actions instead of attach actions. Okay, that's that. Two, no greater disaster than to underestimate the enemy. That's the, what's the enemy? That's the challenges or problems. Okay, that's on one level. Okay, never underestimate, underestimate or lightly regard our problems, issues. Okay, so we'll, we'll that that we'll get a little bit deeper in that in chapter seventy-one. Okay, so treat your task or you know it's like challenges or whatever options with appropriate respect okay with gravitas okay chapter 26 hold on to the state of awareness or consciousness of Buddha. that's the higher level okay that's the highest level okay so what's the enemy our ego all right or, or the which is not our conscience right the opposite of our conscience so that means we have to hold on okay now the side that is compassionate shall win okay so act from our core essence of compassion, okay? Our natural compassion. Remember the four immeasurable minds? The first one is compassion or kindness. You can say kindness, compassion. Ci, right? That's the four. Si, wu liang xing, okay? That's, that's a natural, natural uh, trait, a natural innate trait. We don't, have to, we don't have to learn it. It's natural. It's already part of our Buddha nature essence, okay? That's why we have to act from our core essence of compassion. Remember, you do what you do because you care. You care about the others because they are the same as you actually, okay? Even though physically they're not, but spiritually or you know, from the Buddha essence, we're the same. So that's why we have to treat others with compassion because we're the same actually, ultimately, okay? So we care, right? We care about that. So when all your actions are driven by or comes from our ultimate purpose in life, there is nothing can, that can stop you because your ultimate, why? Because what's the ultimate purpose? The ultimate purpose in life is our true self nature, Buddha nature essence, okay? So so that's, okay, so, so I'm gonna get to the conclusion. I'm sorry, a little bit over, but uh, let's go to the conclusion right now, okay? So here's the key. So, so oops, sorry, okay. So in dealing with the battles in life, when facing off a great challenge with an equally great determination or will, you shall prevail by having a purpose where the ultimate purpose in your life is your true self nature, Buddha nature. When your, all your actions are sourced from your true self nature, you are invisible, invincible, sorry, invincible because they are congruent. Now, because your actions, oh, I'm getting a hold of that, are non conditional. Okay, that's. That's a direct reflection of your Buddha nature essence or the Tao, okay? So this points to the first section, okay? That's, that's I'm getting to where one prefers to be the guest rather than dare be the host, which is the non-conditioned, non-state, uh, non-attached state of mind instead of a conditioned or attached state of mind. While one prefers to retreat a foot or withdraw a foot and not dare advance an inch is to act with non-attached actions instead of attached actions, okay? And then we go into depth a little bit. Where, oops, sorry, okay, where, okay, where you act, that's the march in formation, without attachments or conditions or motives. They naturally reflect their true selves without any contrivance or agenda. This is the most ideal. So it seems as if you go through life without any direction or concrete plan. That's marching in formation without formation. Where raising arms without arms is to eliminate all negative feelings, to overcome oneself, to overcome one's six roots. Then you are able to act decisively by applying non-attached, non-conditioned actions. Where the greatest enemy is yourself. So it seems as if you get things done without taking any action. That's the raising arms about arms, where charging or grappling the enemies about enemies is to face yourself, 
where the greatest enemy is within oneself. That's the ego. So with a non-conditioned mind, there is no ego to overcome since you have already overcome yourself. That's the false enemy, uh, the false self of the enemy. So it seems as if you are able to deal with things without any ego. That's the charging or grappling enemies without enemies. Where grasping weapons without weapons is when a, with a non-conditioned mind or non-attached mind, all your thoughts, that's the tools, the weapons, are in accord with your conscience, Buddha nature, and Tao. So your thoughts are no longer weapons, not weapons. So it seems as if you achieve goals without any attached thoughts of relying on any tools, weapons, such as wealth, status, or power. That's the grasping weapons without weapons because you rely on your true self nature or Buddha nature instead. All right. Where the greatest disaster is to underestimate or regard the ego, that's the enemy, lightly. You never regard lightly or underestimate the responses of the six roots because this will lead to the loss of awareness or the state of true self nature. That's the loss of the three treasures of compassion, conservation, and humility. So in life, when you are faced with a great challenge with e with, and with equal great determination, you will prevail over the great challenges li in life because you have compassion, where compassion is a metaphor for fighting with purpose. That's something worth fighting for. That is the ultimate purpose of your life, okay? And that's it. Here's the last line. Where... The, where having the ultimate purpose of your life is your true self-nature, Buddha nature. When all your actions are sourced from your true self-nature, you shall prevail over the challenges in life because compassion is the non-confrontational, non-violent, gentle, and soft approach. This is being true to oneself, or this is facing oneself when using the military. All right, okay, I'm sorry, I went a little bit over, about 10 minutes. Uh, anyway, okay, so uh, that's all. That concludes chapter 69. Um, if I said anything wrong or, or not proper, uh, I ask for the Buddhas and Lao Tzu's uh, guidance and forgiveness and everybody else's guidance. Okay, thank you, everybody.